You might want to follow along as we progress through this course. And in order to do that, there are two projects that are available on my GitHub account that you might want to download or clone locally. The first project is RPS Tracker ASP MVC. And this is the RPS Tracker application built using ASP.NET MVC. This version does not have any Telerik UI in it yet. So this is the starting point of our course. If you want to follow along with what we're doing exactly, you can download this as your starting point too. The second project is RPS Tracker ASP MVC underscore Kendo. This is the final state of our application or the goal that we're trying to get to at the completion of this course. This version has all the Telerik UI widgets and components, and you can look at it for reference if you run into any trouble. Both of these projects are Visual Studio solutions, and they each have a simulated backend project that's already included in the solution. All you need to do is run the web project. We'll do this in a moment. Now, just a quick note about the projects for those of you that are skipping ahead. You can run the first project right after downloading it, and everything will work just because there's no dependency on Telerik UI or anything else. But you won't be able to run the second project until you've added the Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC NuGet package to it. So hold off on running that one until we go through that process together. Head over to GitHub and then find this RPS Tracker ASP MVC project. We're going to start with this one. Here you have the option to clone or download. You can download this as is. Now I've already downloaded this and placed it on my machine. So all I have to do is just open this up in Visual Studio. This is the solution with three projects in it. We're going to be running the rps.web project. So make sure you go ahead and build the solution. And if build succeeds, you can go ahead and start the IIS Express server by clicking on this button up here. This will go ahead and start up our project. All this data is simulated and stored in memory while you're running the application. Here you'll be able to navigate the application between the dashboard page and the backlog page. You can add a new item here. If you add new items and then restart the application, those items will no longer be there because all the data is in memory. And if you stop or terminate the running process, that memory will be cleared out and those items will no longer be available. Now let's go back to GitHub and find the other project, which is the RPS Tracker ASP MVC underscore Kendo. They're pretty much identical, except this project has the Telerik UI built into it. You can go ahead and download or clone this as well. I've already done so. Now, in order to run this, there's a few more steps you need to do. Let's discuss some installation options, and then we'll come back to running our finished application. In order to install Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC, there are a few installation options and approaches available to you. And I'll discuss these from the most automated to the least automated. The first option is the fully automated approach. This is a Windows installer, and it's available with your downloads. When you install this, it installs the Telerik UI templates that allow you to generate brand new applications in Visual Studio. These applications are based on the ASP.NET MVC application templates that come with Visual Studio, but they also add the Telerik UI on top of it. This is very useful if you're going to be starting a brand new application and you know you want to include Telerik UI with your apps. The second approach is installing a NuGet package into an existing application. Since we're already starting with an existing application, this is the approach I'll be using in this course because it offers enough automation to add the necessary assets and dependencies into an existing application, yet you have a bit of a manual control over this process and you can script this process. For example, if you have a CI build. If you are starting out with a brand new application, you can still use this option as well. You can create a new ASP.NET MVC app using the included Microsoft templates that come with Visual Studio and then add the Telerik NuGet package. We'll be going through this shortly and we'll be adding the Telerik UI package to an existing application. And finally, the last approach is completely manual. You can use this approach if you want full control over absolutely every aspect of the installation of the Telerik UI libraries. You can place your DLL wherever you want to, you can place your scripts and your CSS assets wherever you want to. And you can update the web config file yourself. These are some of the things that installing the NuGet package automatically does for you. So let's go over the changes in your project when you install the NuGet package. First of all, the Telerik UI DLL is added to your project as a reference. Then a set of JavaScript and CSS files are included. These will be coming up in this course just a little bit later. 
And finally, the modification of web config is done for you automatically as well. And a namespace is registered in your system.web section so that Kendo server helpers can automatically be referenced in your Razor pages. If you're choosing the manual route of installation, you'd have to do this yourself. All right, let's move on to installing the Telerik UI for ASP.NET NuGet package into our existing application. In this lesson, we're going to install Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC, and we're going to use the NuGet package approach. When you log into your Telerik account and you're on your account page, you can click on the downloads link at the top to access the installer packages and the NuGet package downloads. Scroll down a little bit and find the section that says Progress Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC. Then on this page, you're going to see the commercial installation package for Windows, then a few other setup files, and the one you want is the MVC5 NuGet package. Go ahead and download this one. Then find the file in your downloads folder or wherever you downloaded it to, and we're going to copy it. I'm going to bring it over to where I store my packages, and that's going to be in the code folder, Telerik UI and just paste it right in here. Make sure you remember this path because we're going to need to point to this path for the NuGet package when we set up Visual Studio. Now, in your RPS Tracker ASP MVC solution, this is the one that doesn't have Telerik UI installed, head over to Manage Packages for the Solution link and notice that right now we don't have a source for Telerik UI. We just have the standard sources that come for the NuGet packages, which is NuGet.org and the Microsoft one. Hit on this little cogwheel over here so you can access the settings. And we're gonna add a new package source. So click on the add button here, and then click on the button right here next to the source so we can navigate to the folder where we just stored that NuGet package. Just point to the Telerik UI folder, and you can give it a name. Let's call it Telerik UI, and click on update. Don't forget to do this. Make sure that Telerik UI is listed in the available package sources and then you can click OK here. Now if we go to switch the package source to Telerik UI, you'll see this Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC5 package available right here. It's not currently installed, but we can install it. We're going to install it to the rps.web project. Go ahead and click Install. This is going to take a few minutes to do because it's going to copy over quite a few files and packages. You can take a look at the output at the bottom to see the progress. This does take a few minutes, so don't get alarmed if you see nothing being populated here. While it's installing, let's take a look at the Solution Explorer. Open up the RPS web project. You can see under references that we already have Kendo MVC DLL installed. There's going to be something in this content folder a little bit later. I guess the installation hasn't gotten to it yet. And then in the script folder, we have the Kendo folder, which has been installed by the NuGet package. This has all our JavaScript assets. The other change that the NuGet package installation does automatically for us is it edits the web config file. If we take a look here, you'll see that it added a new pages section and it registered the Kendo UI MVC namespace here. And while we're looking at the web config, it looks like our Kendo content folder got populated. It's still working a little bit by copying the files over. There's quite a few CSS and image files that need to be copied into the content folder but you can see that it's already there and being populated. We can keep an eye on the progress of the installation by going to the NuGet package manager here. And once it's done, you'll see the Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC package under the installed tab. After installation, go ahead and run this project to make sure that everything still works as it should. And here we are in our RPS application and everything seems to be working just fine. We can navigate to the dashboard and the backlog. Now let's go back to our Finish RPS app. That's the one that already has Telerik UI installed. And now that we have a NuGet package repository for the Telerik UI components, we'll be able to run this app. We'll do that next. Now that we have the Telerik UI NuGet package source registered with Visual Studio, let's open up our RPS Tracker ASPMVC Kendo solution. And let's take a look at the Solution Explorer here. We're going to go ahead and clean the solution. And after it's cleaned successfully, go ahead and do a rebuild of the entire solution. The reason I'm doing the clean and rebuild is sometimes not all the files get copied to the bin directories. I even had to manually go in there and delete everything out of the bin directory and rebuild after getting a complaint that some Roslyn files were missing. If you come across that error, just make sure that you go ahead and 
clean everything out. You can even delete everything from the bin folders in your projects and then rebuild. Once rebuilding is complete, go ahead and launch the application. And you can see that now the application is running with our Kendo UI components in place. You can navigate the filters on the dashboard and you can go to the backlog page and take a look at the items. Here's the details form with the Kendo UI components on the form. You can run both projects at the same time because they're running on different ports. The project you'll be working on throughout this course is running on port 49826 and the finished Kendo application is running on port 49827. So you can always run the finished project in the background just so that you have a visual reference of what the final result looks like. So if you get into any trouble while you're implementing, you can check to see the results. The two projects will not interfere with each other because they're running on different ports. All right, let's get into the next chapter where we're gonna start doing some implementation. Let's take a moment to review the project structure just so that you're familiar with it. Here I have the RPS Tracker ASPMVC Kendo solution open, and we have three projects in here, core, data, and web. The core project has our entity models and also our data transfer models. So things like user, which has a full name and an avatar, and it inherits from object base, which gives us things like ID, title, date created, and date modified, and so on. And then the PT item, this is the actual backlog item. So it has a description, an estimate, priority, status, type, assignee, which is a PT user, a list of tasks, and a list of comments. You'll see all these surfaced on the front end. This is going to be visible in the details when we edit the items in the forms, as well as the list of backlog items. We also have a few DTOs here, which is just a way for us to transfer data that's going to be in slightly different formats between the data layer and the web layer. All right, so that's the core project. And the core project is imported by both the data project and the web project, because the data project is a simulation of a data repository layer that you might have in a real enterprise application. So this will have your repositories, this will have maybe your ORM connection. In our case, we don't have a database or an ORM. We have this gen data folder with some JSON files in here. One file for items and one file for users. This JSON data is parsed and then kept in memory while the application runs. This is to simulate a database. But the interfaces that are exposed to the web layer are pretty much going to be consistent with the type of interfaces you will see if we're using a database or an ORM. So in the web layer, we are using dependency injection with Unity. You don't need to know any of that stuff at all. You just need to run this project. But if you are interested in the Unity configuration, you can take a look at the app start folder and there's Unity config right there. We will be digging into the bundle config when we configure the Telerik UI client side libraries. So we will come back to this folder. Now, back in the web project, we have two controllers, the backlog controller and the dashboard controller. The dashboard controller is going to have all our actions for the dashboard and the backlog controller is going to have all our actions for the backlog items list as well as the details page. Here's the views folder. We have a backlog folder for views, a dashboard folder and a shared folder. We'll be back to visit the shared folder in the next chapter when we're going to be working with the layout. For now, all we have here is just some HTML defining the navigation structure for the site and some styling, and we're rendering the body inside here. The dashboard page is pretty self-explanatory. It's quite simple, really. It just has one view, the index view, and we'll be going through this in more detail later. And the backlog views, there's quite a few here. The items.cshtml file, this is the razor view that has our list of backlog items. Initially, this is just a table, but we're going to be converting it to a grid later. Then we have the create view. This is where we add a new item. It's a form. So this will be your introduction to using Kendo controls inside a razor form. And then we have the details CSHTML view. This is a main view for the details page, but it hosts multiple partial views. So inside the details view, we're going to switch based on the URL and we're going to switch between the details form, the tasks form, and the chit chat form. This way you can see the interaction between a Kando tab strip that we're going to see and how we're going to configure it to work with the URL. So back to the project tracker, this is the dashboard view. Then we have the backlog 
items view, this is the items CS HTML file. If I click on add, we're going to go to the create view. And then if I click on one of these items, we're going to go to the details view. And when we're on the details view, we have this tab strip up here and we can switch between different sub views. So this is where we're going to be able to hook up the tab strip to the URL. And we can navigate directly from the URL to a certain tab, a technique that's called deep linking. So that gives you an introduction to the structure of the project.